Hi, I'm Scott from the ArcGIS Enterprise team at Esri, and this video will demonstrate the use of the Chef framework to automate a multi-machine deployment of ArcGIS Enterprise. If you're just starting out, take a look at our intro video, which gives an overview of ArcGIS Enterprise and Chef. Using Chef to automate a deployment like this reduces the amount of work and time it takes to install and configure an enterprise system. And that's particularly true for multi-machine systems. So for this example workflow, we'll create a four machine deployment with an ArcGIS GeoAnalytics server instance. GeoAnalytics is built to handle big data. Its tools use distributed processing to dramatically reduce the time a geoprocessing job takes to run. Now, we recommend spreading a GeoAnalytics server site over at least three machines in order to take advantage of its power and using an identical number of ArcGIS data stores that are configured for spatial temporal big data. But part of the appeal of Chef is that you can automate a small deployment to start and then come back and rerun your recipes to create additional machines. So today, I'll first call the Chef server to create a base deployment on one machine. That's the fundamental setup of ArcGIS Enterprise with the hosting server federated to a portal, a data store, and two web adapters. When that's installed, I can add a spatial temporal big data store on the next machine. With that ready, I can then add a GeoAnalytics server and I'll install a file server on the last machine. It won't have any ArcGIS software on it, but it will host the config stores for our enterprise deployment. And again, I have the ability to come back in the future and scale up my server and big data store on additional machines. Now here's how that translates into the Chef automation process. We'll work with an established Chef server to create nodes on each machine and install the corresponding software components. First, I'll use the Chef Development Kit and Starter Kit on a workstation machine to contact our Chef server. I'll upload the Esri cookbooks and several customized JSON files to the server. Then I'll run a few sets of commands directing the server to create nodes on the Y4 production machines, give each a role, and run the recipes corresponding to that role. Once the dev kit has installed everything, my enterprise system will be ready. That means no configuration wizards, no software authorization wizards, it's all done for you based on what you put in the JSON files. Now let's get started on my workstation. First, we'll download the starter kit from the Chef server, which contains the Chef repository we'll work in. And to run the commands, we use the Chef development kit, ChefDK, which runs as a PowerShell module. I'll download both and then extract my starter kit to the C drive so that I can call the extracted repository at C colon slash Chef dash repo. Next, we need Esri's ingredients from the GitHub site. I'll go there and download the cookbooks and the role zip files. I'll now extract the cookbooks directly to the Chef repo. The roles file contains an environments folder and a roles folder. Since there's already a roles folder in the Chef repo, I'll copy the contents of Esri's into it. And then I'll just copy and paste the environments folder right in. The beauty of Chef is that setting up these four machines is almost entirely automated. As you'll see, we'll only enter a couple dozen line commands into PowerShell before the entire setup is complete. The first thing I want to do is install the Knife plugin. This will run all other commands that we enter during the setup. I'll then use the Knife plugin to fetch my server's SSL certificate and check to make sure this machine is communicating with the Chef server. That's all good, so next I'll upload the contents of the Cookbooks folder in my Chef repo containing everything I grabbed from Esri's GitHub. Probably the most involved part of this process is taking the environments and roles JSON files we got from Esri and modifying them to specify our own values. Here on the left, we have six JSON files in the roles folder, the four we'll be using today, plus a role for any additional GeoAnalytics server nodes, and an uninstall role. And our environments folder just has one JSON file. We'll need to open each of them up in a text editor and swap out the values. So I'll use the GeoAnalytics JSON as an example. We just go through the sample file, pick out the variables that need changing, match them with our specific values, and add them into the file. Once they're saved, we can upload the environment file to the Chef server, which holds the set of parameters and authorization files for all four of our machines. Throughout this process, I can log in to my Chef Manager account in an internet browser. There, I can monitor every aspect of my Chef server and the nodes I'm working on, here I'm verifying the environment file was uploaded. We're ready to move on to install the software components. Now I'm going to do this using five basic commands. Each command will be iterated across our four machines. First, we bootstrap the target machine. 
This gives the machine a node name and installs the chef client on that machine. Second, we upload the role file for that machine, such as base enterprise.json or fileserver.json. Third, we set the role of the machine node using the name we gave it in the bootstrap command. Fourth, we set the environment of the machine node to the environment file we uploaded earlier. And lastly, we run the chef client on the node, which will install the software specified by the role. Now this gives you some flexibility in the order you run your setup. You can either go machine by machine or command by command. The former gives you more power to roll back when you have issues with the machine. The latter runs more quickly in a production environment. I'll do a mix of both here. First, I'll run all five commands on my base deployment machine so I can be sure everything's working correctly. Then, I'll save a PowerShell script with the five commands for the other three machines and I'll run that in the console. Fast forwarding to the end of the script run, let's go back to our chef manager in the browser and ensure that all of our nodes have been created and placed in the right environment. It has all the information, attributes, history, and logs for these nodes I've created and the files I've uploaded. It all looks good to me. Now let's see our beautiful new ArcGIS Enterprise setup. Going into the Organization tab, then Edit Settings, and finally to the Servers tab, we see the domains for our GIS server and our GeoAnalytics server. To check my data stores, I'll hop over to the Server Manager, and on the Site tab, I'll open up Data Stores and click Validate All. Yup, all set up. The last thing is to check and make sure I have GeoAnalytics enabled in my portal. I'll open up the Portal Map Viewer, drag and drop in a sample CSV file, symbolize it how I want, and then in the Contents tab, I'll click on Perform Analysis. There, I'll have the option to run Standard Analysis or GeoAnalytics, which uses distributed processing. Great! This setup is ready to run the big data tools of ArcGIS GeoAnalytics Server, and as you saw, Chef made this whole process incredibly easy and straightforward. Now all of this is just one possible workflow with one possible end result setup for ArcGIS using Chef. There are plenty more at the Esri Chef GitHub with step-by-step -step instructions and files. For example, you could set up a highly available base deployment, install ArcGIS desktop apps on your machines, or create other multi-machine deployments, such as GeoEvent for real-time big data streams. For more information on Chef, visit chef.io or just Google Chef Automation to see all the cool resources and tutorials out there. Feel free to reach out to us with questions or suggestions. Happy automating!